oh, 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 Ryan and the dark. Hello, hooligans. Welcome back to another one of my movie reviews. Today, we are talking about DreamWorks' latest movie, Orion and the Dark, streaming on Netflix. It is actually adapted from Emma Yarlett's picture book of the same name. The thing Orion fears the most is the dark. When the embodiment of his worst fear pays a visit, Dark whisks Orion away on a roller coaster ride around the world to prove there is nothing to be afraid at night. We meet other night entities and characters throughout the movie and learn why this night is so important to Orion's life. It's a 90 minute runtime, so it's very short and sweet, and I think kids would definitely eat up this movie. So it's similar to Rise of the Guardians or Inside Out. It definitely borrows a lot of elements from other movies, but I would still say this movie remains pretty unique. I don't think it quite lives up to other DreamWorks animated movies like How to Train Your Dragon, for example, but I still think it's definitely worth the watch. Right off the bat, I loved the animation. The way it's animated kind of reminds me of Luca or that short film in a heartbeat. I think maybe the curly hair is what's reminding me, but also the mannerisms of Orion definitely remind me of those movies. What's unique about this movie is that it has this fuzzy, grainy texture on their characters, and it makes use of 2D and 3D elements, so throughout the movie it was very, very appealing to look at. Also, each night entity is really well designed. Dark is the main night entity. They designed him in a way where he's dark and commanding, but not frightening. It's almost like the dark version of Baymax. Sleep and Insomnia are hilarious. I did not expect how their powers work. Also, Insomnia just reminded me of the anxiety bugs in Big Mouth. Also, there was a character called Unexplained Noises, which is just a ridiculous concept, but I also loved it. There's also Quiet, which is so, so adorable. Light is also a character in this movie, and he looks like the string cheese mascot. At first, I thought they were going to straight up make Light the villain. I'm glad they didn't. Light and Dark kind of just exist on their own. They kind of do their own thing. And it shows that both cannot exist without the other. Also, an interesting visual choice is to have all of the characters at night be very vibrant, very colorful, while when it's daytime, everything is kind of washed out and more gray looking. So I really like that choice. The movie was also surprisingly funny. Like I previously mentioned, Sleep and Insomnia are two of the more comedic characters. And honestly, every character kind of made me laugh at certain points. The Dialogue can also be very meta at times. For example, when Orion meets Dark, they have this conversation about how Dark looks like a cartoon character. I also love how this movie portrays fear and anxiety at that age because it's very relatable. Orion has a lot of fears and one of them is a killer clown, which I totally relate on. And I like how they show anxiety as something that is outside of logic. When someone tells you the reality of things, you still kind of spiral out of control and lose touch with reality, and you just think of the worst case scenarios of everything. And if you don't experience anxiety, well, I am jealous of you. But you come up with things in your head that normal people wouldn't even think about. For example, in this movie, Dark wanted Orion to touch the water, but Orion was too scared because he thought a shark was going to bite off his hand. And the movie shows that it's normal for fear and anxiety to show up in adulthood. It's not just limited to children. And it's a really great message that you can overcome these fears, even if it's not a linear process. Everyone is afraid of something, right? And it's totally normal. Even darkness is afraid of light. And as someone who loves the night time, I love that they portrayed night as not something to fear, but something to also view as beautiful. That's why dark is not the only night entity. There's also a bunch of other things. Comment below if you are team nighttime or team daytime. So I only have a few complaints about the movie. First off, it just takes too much time getting to know the characters. We basically spend 50 minutes before any conflict starts showing up, and it's a lot of talking. It's not a lot of adventure. And the story was very, very simple and straightforward. I can definitely tell why DreamWorks decided to make this a Netflix streaming movie instead of a theatrical release. Now that I'm thinking about it, this movie also kind of reminds me of Polar Express a little bit, but even Polar Express had more adventure going on. So part of the movie, there was a little bit of a time travel story. At first, I wasn't a fan because I thought it was super random, but then by the end, when I realized what they were going for, I was kind of gagged. And I can't lie, I got weirdly emotional about it. Like it wasn't anything sad, but I don't know, I just, 
It just was emotional. If you guys know what I'm talking about, let me know what you thought about that. Although I still do think the time travel thing could have been done a little bit better, especially if you introduced that specific character earlier in the film, because we really don't explore that concept until the last five to 10 minutes. So it just felt like this extra thing that they added on last minute. So overall, I give this movie a 7.5 out of 10. It is the definition of simple yet effective. Well, that's it from me. Did you guys watch the movie? What did you guys think? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Also, make sure you like and subscribe if you enjoyed this review. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.